so are you living on your own? Are you with parents or? I live by myself in Nashville. Okay. So you are in Nashville. Okay. Yeah. So I usually like to start these off with sort of like an origin story because I feel like that gives us kind of an idea of who you are and how you've gotten to, to where you are. We don't need like a huge backstory, but maybe kind of starting off somewhere in the beginning. Like when did you yeah. first get into music? Do you come from a musical family? That sort of stuff. For sure. So I grew up in Massachusetts and I am lucky enough to be from a family that was always doing something musical. My mom was an actress and then went to college and became like an English teacher. And so she was always very musical. And my dad was in, they actually met when he was in like a rock band in New York City. And so that's always kind of been like my family. There was always somebody playing guitar, always music in the background, which I thought was so normal until you're like, wait, that's like not a normal thing, but like dads don't all play guitar in the living room. Yeah, where's your dad's guitar at? (laughs) Yeah, I know. I'm like, sleeping in a friend's house or a sleepover and I'm like where's your guitar and they're like a what you know it's like (laughs) it's super funny so I was I was lucky enough to grow up um just around that all the time and thinking that was like normal and they had like great music taste I grew up on like Sheryl Crow and Bonnie Raitt and um, nice yeah and Sean Colvin and like just really cool like songwriters and storytellers and so that was really fun and I kind of was in talent shows and I did like open mic night stuff around town. I played during my dad's advanced intermissions in our like our hometown. Um, but that was like my big break playing at like bars and grills when my dad's band was playing. Um, nice. But, and then right after high school, I told my parents I was gonna take a gap year and move to Nashville for a year and then go to college. And then I've been here ever since. So, okay, so yeah. did you end up going to college or what happened there? I didn't. I, to be honest, I always knew I was not going to go to college. I hated high school. I was like Mm -hmm. the kind of person I was not cool enough to be popular. I wasn't athletic enough to be like play sports, be athletic. And, um, I wasn't smart enough to be like a collegiate, like scholar, you know, and like fit into that. Group. So you're like, you're just like in the hallways, just kind of looking around. Absolutely. Where do I go? I was like, I, and it's so funny. Like now I'm like, there's probably so many people that felt that way. But at the time I was like, I don't have a group. I don't have a click. I don't have a thing. And Absolutely. so um, I hated it. I was like, there's no way I'm going to like pay a lot of money and then do this again. And then have to like live with people that I'd like, don't get along with or that don't like me. Um, and obviously a lot of people don't have that experience, but that was like my fear. I was like, sure. I'm not going to like pay to like be in a dorm with people who I don't get along with. Um, and so I kind of always was like, I'm kind of the person I'm like, throw me into the middle of it. Like that is always how I've been. I'm like, I will, I have figure to figure it out. it out. Yeah. And, um, and I have to like learn my own lessons. I'm super stubborn and I just have to like do everything my way. Sure. And, um, so I just, I automatically knew when I came here that I wasn't gonna leave um I drove my mom's car here and told her I'd bring it back in a year and (laughs) I never did (laughs) sorry mom so what did they think when you said that you weren't going to college uh, that you were I'm guessing you were going to pursue music at this point so yeah I moved to Nashville because like on the back of so many of those CDs like Cheryl Crow Martina McBride like all these incredible artists they all were recorded in Nashville and I like hadn't heard of Nashville really. And this was eight years ago. So this is, um, that's so weird to say out loud. (laughs) So long ago. Oh my God. Um, Hey, you have, you have no idea. Just wait 10 more years. Oh my God. It's terrifying. (laughs) Um, and yeah, so I, I remember looking at the back of the CDs and they were all like recorded this studio, Nashville, Tennessee. And then I remember Casey Musgraves, just so random. But when she released like Merry Go Round, like that huge song, yep. um, she did a Rolling Stones article about her talking about Nashville and her talking about how she's like, it's just all songwriters that live next to each other and all your neighbors are in music. And I was like, what is this crazy land of like <laughs> artists and creative people I was like oh my god that's like better than college I'm gonna go right do that because it sounds easy um <laughs> it was definitely not um but yeah I, I just came down here and I it was always for music I really just wanted to I felt like all the greats of songwriters were here and I was like 
I just need to get into a room with them and then it will all make sense and it will all happen. And that was always my goal was to just be like, I just need one opportunity to get into the room, yeah. you know? And right. That's very Nashville is very much like, I just give me one shot and I'll prove myself, you know? Um, but yeah, my parents were so supportive and are always so much like, I mean, I, I have a tattoo on my arm. My mom wrote me a letter that literally said, I know that most parents with creative kids should usually tell them to get a backup plan, but you will never need that. And she sent that to me How on like awesome. my 19th birthday or something when I was living here. And so I got the, you will never need that on me. But I was like, like, that's such a crazy thing. I have so many friends who have parents who are like, oh, I'm so proud of you. But like, what are you going to do if that fails? You know, and you automatically just prepare for, you automatically have a safety net, which makes it so you like don't really take as many risks and you don't right. feel like you have to make it work. And I've always been like, I, this is the only thing. This is the right, only option. Exactly. So no, I appreciate them for that. Yeah, that that totally makes sense. Uh, just having that that backup plan, you don't fully go all in like you should. Yeah. I, you don't you don't give yourself the real chance you need. Yeah. So, so it's awesome to hear though that I don't even know what I would categorize your music as. Clearly, there's pop, there's rock. Thanks. I don't know. It, I guess you could say pop punk because pop punk's kind of got this. It's in a weird state right now where, and, and I've said it before on on our podcast where it seems like. You've got rock, you've got punk, you've got alternative, and it's all meshing together. And we're getting this type of new sound. So I, I guess I would throw it in there, but um, I hear a whole lot of different genres in your style. So That's it's a huge compliment. It's, well, it's cool. And I understand why. It's because you've already uh, name dropped Martina McBride, Cheryl Crow, um, some others that don't necessarily fit the yeah. scene that you have sort of landed in and I think that's really cool and it's so weird too that um and I kind of wanted to save this for the end but we're kind of just naturally going here because I want to talk about your single Lost that's coming out I did get in advance of that it is a solid tune um but I just hear like and tell me if this sounds weird but I feel like I hear it kind of takes me back to when I was little sitting in the back of the car while my mom drove and she's playing like the uh like the top 40s maybe some uh, older classics but i'm getting like late 80s to early 90s like v- pop hit vibes That's in this song uh but at the same time it's like i can hear obviously there's some rock elements there's some pop elements and whatnot uh and I don't know if I'm just feeling this way because I know you're going on tour with the main, but I feel like <laughs> I get the main vibes in this song. So that's, inc- that's a huge it's such a it's such a unique tune, but it's it's so and I mean that in the best way possible. It's it's so good. Like, I actually think, Charlotte, that this this song is going to be your song. Like, I truly, truly think that, that like means a lot you have to you have a lot of bangers. Right. So, I mean, you've got you've got dress. You've got uh, Keep Me Up All Night just came out, and then Want You Like That just came out. Want You Like That. That's the one I was thinking of. Then there's Bad Day, which is really good. And I like those are solid, solid songs, and they've done well for you. But I would put this song up against all those, and I think this one's going to take you to another level. I really do. That makes me so happy. It's always, like, terrifying to release music. And also, I appreciate, like, those references for this song because it's so funny. Like, I'm... I've never called myself like pop punk. I've never been, there is definitely like a huge renaissance of like this music, which I am a fan of. I grew up on like all time low in the main and all these like bands yeah. that are like 2000s pop punk, you know, but right. um, I, I, my version of what pop punk is, is very different than like the current standard of pop punk, which is like guitar, you know, yeah. and which is totally fine. Like it's, it's really is just like this resurrection of this music, which is like incredible. But it is every time anybody's like, so what's your genre? I'm like, I think I list like eight things because I'm like, I genuinely don't know. Like, this is what I'm inspired by, but that this is what other people categorize it as. And then the, right. so it's it's kind of like a melting pot of like, it's like Bonnie Raitt and All Time Low. Like, how do you yeah, do that's that? So, you yeah. know? How, do you, how like, do you combine the two? I'm like, I'm just going to start listing every, like any genre that comes to my mind. But um, so it makes me really happy when people like, feel that I because I I hate I think that artists are their own genre now I think that genre is kind of 
going away and it's really it's it's almost very fluid right yeah and I love that like I've always been somebody who is like I want to put out a folk album I want to put out like a heavy rock album I want to put out like an acoustic like I want to feature on country songs like I want to I've just grown up on every type of music and I've never ever been like this is what I'm going to make for the rest of my career and so the fact that people are supportive of artists creating different types of music and different genres and the fact that this next song lost coming out I feel like feels like risky for me even though it's probably not as much as I think it is but it feels like it's like very different than just like the 100 percent like like bat like cool like pop punk like rock alt pop stuff it's just like sure but it, it's really not as different as I feel like it is, but it is always so strange. Yeah, I think I think for you, since you're living it, you're writing it, you're going to be a little bit more critical. Yeah. Uh, for me, on the outside, you know, looking in, this song, it, it does fit your style perfectly. And I don't think it's like so such a far direction from, you know, your last singles or even the, you know, the collabs you've, re- you've recently been on. Um, I think it fits nicely. It just, I just feel like, I don't know. Just the the execution of this song, the just that bass riff that that starts it off. It's like okay, like I don't know. It just makes you start bobbing your head and everything. Yeah. Your melody, uh, the lyrics, everything. I mean, it does actually feel like it could be a springtime, summertime type anthem. And um, just based on the lyrics alone, I know like all the emo kids old and young will love this song because it it sounds like it's their anthem that's like hey if you don't know who you are or maybe you're a little bit lost everything is just good it's gonna be fine just go ahead and be you do you everything's gonna be fine and i also feel like um and and i i feel like that is the message that you're giving off and you can you can tell me if i'm wrong but i also feel like too since it it does feel like we're coming out of the pandemic knock on wood um i feel like it comes out this song is coming out at the right time, you know, like we're all ready to get out and be ourselves again. We may have forgotten how we were, you know, two years ago when we went into lockdown and everything, but everything's going to be fine, you know? So that, that's kind of how I feel when I listen to this song. And I've listened to this song at least 20 times since receiving it (laughs) last night. So Let's go. No, I appreciate that, that you hit the nail on the head. That is, that is everything that I want it to, um, give and so I'm I'm so happy that you feel that way that is so kind I'm really excited I'm excited you should be you you should be and Thanks. I'm I'm excited to see where where this takes you but can you talk about the song a little bit I mean sure. I guess I kind of said what it was kind of about but maybe how did this song come about is it since I did get some the main vibes is this sort yeah. of is this a newly written song or did yeah. it come after working with them or anything like that so This actually, this song was written like really recently. It was written, I think, maybe like two, I won't want to say two months ago, but that honestly might be right. Um, We wrote this like, I think pretty quickly right before I went on the Youngblood tour. Um, Oh, okay. So, and honestly, we weren't like originally going to release it now. We had like another song lined up and then we were like, it just felt right. And we ended up pushing that one and being like, this feels like just in time for like spring and like where we are right now and about to go out on this other tour. I was like, this, it just lined up really well. Um, and so we, I mean, it was hilarious. We didn't even have like promo or anything for it. And I got back from that tour a week ago and I had one day that I didn't have anything on my calendar. And I had, we in one day (laughs) rented out like a studio and did like two hours of just like random video promo stuff for it like four Uh days ago so we like literally just that is like how I work I'm like do we have time today okay let's do it um I am I'm just like I love the chaos um but so this has been a very like quick decision that but we just like decided to do it and it felt right and that's how I like to make most of, most of my release decisions, just off of like how I feel at the time. Yeah, um, right. I Gotta go with your gut. Yeah, I hate, hate planning things like six months in advance because by the time I get there, I like feel differently about it. Yeah, absolutely. That totally makes sense. But um, yeah, so this song, um, I wrote it with three incredible producers and writers, um, Sam Sumser, Sean Small, and Damon Reed. And yeah, we 
we literally got together one day and in Sam's studio in Nashville. And I think Danon like brought in, we were talking about how he was like, your songs live are so hard to sing. He's like, you need something. Cause he's also my drummer, Danon. Um, and so he was like, we need to write you something that you're going to be able to like sing live and add to your set because it's already so much singing that he's like, we can't keep adding more of these songs or you're going to die. Right. Um, you need a break. Yeah. And so he was like, let's just do like a chanty chorus. Like we haven't really done that. And so I was like, okay, I love that idea. I love, I love a little relaxation moment. And then of course we end up writing like the fastest song I've ever written. And it's like full of words. There's not even like a second where I'm not singing in it. Um, and now I'm like dreading singing. I'm <laughs> just kidding. It's gonna be so fun. Um, but it's, uh, it's it always ends up doing that. I fill every single moment with words. I like always, I have like a you, weird you thing do, about it. Yeah. I, I don't know what the heck it's called, but, uh, like I'll probably cut this out cause I don't want to like shit on Avril Lavigne or anything, yeah, yeah. but like her, so she released a song with uh, Mark Hoppus. I'm sure you've heard it by now. Um, but I feel like the melody is there. The melody is there, mm-hmm. but there's not enough lyrics in that, yeah. uh, in what Mark is singing or what she's singing that really gives the melody, uh, the push that it deserves, I guess. It's really hard to ex- explain. Like yeah, you, you got to hit those syllables and like have enough, I don't know what it's called. I know yeah. there's a term for it, but no, absolutely. But I, yes, I I think you do have a nice way of 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 doing that in your thank songs. Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm honestly like everyone gets really annoyed with me when I'm writing because I like fill every single syllable. I fit as many syllables into every like sentence and melody as I can because I just like love words and like yeah, rhyming. I, you know what? You almost have, and I don't want to say almost. You do. You do have rapping ability. And that's that is nice. <laughs> like when that's what rappers do. They fill in all of the gaps, basically. Yeah, I was actually this is so funny. Um, I was talking about something that, about that yesterday because um, my brother just visited me for the weekend and he grew up on like a ton of Kendrick Lamar. Like would, every time we drove to high school, he would only listen to rap. And I feel like a lot of I love how I'm like Bonnie Raitt, Sheryl Crow, Kendrick Lamar, hey, all time I, low. <laughs> I, I am in your boat. Trust me. <laughs> I am like really a melting pot. Um, but I, I, he like used to like write raps like my brother did and he was like really good at it. And just because he was, he's so smart and like clever. And you know, when people are like really funny and really smart and they kind of just like make puns and like really quick jokes. Right. And I, he, I think because he could do that, he was able to write like insanely clever lyrics and that had like really weird rhymes and patterns and, um, and I was always like, this is every single line in a rap song could be its own song. Like every single line is so clever that I'm like, if I thought of that, I would have written it in my notes. And that's the idea I would have brought into a right. session for an entire song. Um, and so I think that that has always been something that I find like so cool. And I'm like, how do I rhyme as many things as possible, but also like rhyme a weird word in the center. It's like, it's like a challenge for me. Um but it's definitely, I think, because of that. And I was always just like listening to that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, so I appreciate I appreciate you uh, noticing that because it makes me, I love doing that. And then I have to sing it live and I'm like, I can't breathe. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's all good. It's, it's, it's all worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's all worth it. Now, uh, speaking of your live performance, one of um, the All Punked Up contributors, we have like this Facebook chat that goes on. She had shared, uh, she went to one of your shows and she shared a, a clip uh, that she took on her phone. And you were killing it, by the way. Uh, but I was surprised to see it was just you and your drummer. Yeah. So, and, and with a backing track. Mm-hmm. Is, for one, that's amazing that you're able to own that. Because there's something, I mean, you're basically out there on your own. And yeah. you're just, you have to just feed off the energy. So what, like, if you have a full band up there, you can at least maybe, uh, vibe off of your, your bandmates. Yeah. Uh, there's only so much you can vibe off of a drummer, no offense to the drummer, but yeah. you know, um, but yeah, I mean, you're owning it. Um, now what was the decision to do it that way? Was it financial reasons? Was it because you just had to get on this tour and there wasn't anybody to really learn the songs? I mean, it, like Honestly, so how that ended up happening, um, well, first of all, so Dana, the drummer, he, I've, he's basically produced every song I have out. Okay. Um, he's like an incredible writer and producer and one of my best friends. And so 
we met like three years ago or four years ago in Nashville and I saw him drumming for another artist and I remember calling the producer I was working with at the time and being like I need to find a drummer like this guy he's like standing up and clapping and like bringing so much energy and I ended up meeting him and he for some reason agreed to play drums for me and then um we were supposed to play a show and the guy playing bass couldn't come to the date but I really wanted to play the show and yeah. Danon had the idea. Um, he was like, why don't we just do it? And I was like, it's Nashville. Everyone here plays guitar or like 10 instruments. If I'm not playing any instrument and we don't even have a guitar on stage, like no way people are going to take me seriously. I was terrified. Uh -huh. um, but How we, old are you at this time? This was probably, it's probably 21, 22. Okay. All right. Um, and, but I, I feel like it was the first time I, it was the first time I was releasing music like under my, my name and like my first artist project, like that I was taken seriously, um, uh -huh. that I thought anyone else was taken seriously. But, um, and so we ended up doing the show just us and it was like so challenging, but I could feel myself like having to overperform just to entertain people where like normally I could just stand still and people would be entertained and there'd be a guitar player and a drummer and someone playing bass and they're, we're all doing things and everyone's eyes are like this, you know? And right. um, I had to work so much harder to like make sure that, that people were entertained because the whole time all of them are just looking straight at me, you know, and that's it. And so at first I hated it. And then I was like, wait, if I can't do it on like in front of 30 people and I can't make 30 people like this show then that's not anybody else's that that's on me you know yeah. and I and I was like I just felt like it was really good practice I was like if I can't do that to 30 people I'm never gonna be able to do that to like 30,000 and um so I kind of liked the challenge like I'm very competitive <laughs> so I was like okay well we started playing shows like that and I could feel myself ha learning how to like own the stage more and like how to walk back and forth and where to put more attention than like where, how to like interact with people. And I, I think because of that, I had to like teach myself how to do that a lot quicker. And then you like watch videos of yourself and you're like, what if I, what, why am I standing there for 30 <laughs> seconds? I'm not doing anything. And it's so awkward. And then you're right. like, next time you're like, I'm standing still for too long. I must jump, you know? And <laughs> right. it's like all this critique, but yeah, we ended up just like keeping it that way. And um, it's just kind of worked. And I, I, I kind of just enjoy the fact that it's like every time I'm like, I have to show up. And I definitely think that at some point when it gets to the point where the stages are, because I've had, we did have some shows on this last tour that like the stages were huge, like Tabernacle in Atlanta. Like that's a huge stage and it's like a hundred feet long. And so I'm running back and forth and like the drum sets like <laughs> over here and I'm like this the whole time. Right. And, so there's certain moments where I'm like, at a certain point, I think that a third person is going to be necessary just to be able to like take attention so that I can like breathe at certain points right. and just like turn around and be like, <sighs> you know? <laughs> um, but I think until I get to that point where I'm like, I need, I need someone else, I'm going to um, push myself as hard as I can to sure. uh, make it happen. And also financially, we could go on tour in a Prius. Um, yeah. We had a... a accident on our last tour where we I saw that yeah and we like slid on ice a semi hit a few other cars it was a mess but we had a sh we luckily didn't have a show that day but the next day and we almost just put everything in the back of a rental car and me and him just almost went to the show because we were like well we can do it just yes yeah, right um and so that kind of stuff is I'm like I can't imagine having seven people and being like oh no somebody lost this or somebody's guitar is broken or all, it's so many factors. And I'm at the stage in my career where I'm like, the less things that can go wrong for me, I will hold on to that for as long as right. possible. Right, exactly, exactly, <laughs> so, yeah. exactly. So I kind of want to get into your TikTok history, I guess, because I feel like a lot of people would say that, you know, you're a TikTok star. Um, and that that's kind of how you got to where you are, but I know that that's not true. You, cause yeah. clearly you've already said you've been at this for what, eight years or so now. So, so, but I do think it's important to bring up because it is part of your story still. Yeah. Um, but you also killed it 
not once, but twice on TikTok, which I think is amazing. So your first viral post was for um, your song, I Don't Care. But your second viral post, which I think is the really impressive one, is uh, the one where you shared a clip of your song, Dress. So you wrote this song um, as a response to the negative comments uh, about Harry Styles wearing a dress on the cover of, uh, what was it, Vogue? Vogue, yeah. Can you tell that story of how that post and song came to be? Because I, yeah. I, from what I read, I find it very, very fascinating. Absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, the TikTok thing is, it's its so funny. I've i have had such like an up and down experience um, with that, but like 100%, it's, it's a part of my story. It's the same way I feel about tattoos. It's like, they're not all your favorite all the time, but I still wouldn't not like get them because I, there was a part of my story at a time, you know, it, right, I'm, right. I loved it at a time. Um, but no, I, that story is actually funny because that, that was like re- the worst part of the pandemic for me. So it was like the first Christmas or Thanksgiving, like a year in maybe. Um, and I was like a shell of myself. I was like the, I think we all hit a point where we were like, okay, now literally, like, when is this going to end? Like, I (laughs) can't do this anymore. And we would be like, ha, ha, ha. And then we all got to a point where we were like, no, like, this is, we're done. Um, And I was at that point, and my manager, Hannah, who is the hardest working, most incredible person in the entire world, um, I am the luckiest person for having her on my team. But um, she came to me one day and sat me down very sweetly and was like, hey, we can't do anything for you if you're not like creating anything for us to like support. And, um, and I, and she was just like explained it in like a beautiful way. And was like, if you don't create things for people to support, people don't know how to support you. And therefore like you don't get a reaction or anything from anything you're doing. And it's kind of like, we can't really do anything about that unless you create the content. We need you to do something, Charlotte. Yes. And I, of course, I'm the most emotional, sensitive person ever. So, of course, I took it so personally. And I was like, how am I? And to be completely honest, like, TikTok and social media is super challenging because I was at the worst part of, like, my mental health and all of that. But being expected, and as a lot of artists are, most artists, and a lot of other careers as well, expected to put out like content about my personality and of me trying to be like funny or go viral or be like show my personality that at the time was like one percent of my actual personality and just like not things that I really felt like showing off so I was kind of having an identity crisis because I'm like I don't really think I want to like amplify who I am right now into the world for eternity um but at the same time like what else am I going to do just like sit here and like not do anything so I was like, I am going to make a TikTok to prove to Hannah that it's not going to work. And I was going home for Thanksgiving and she was like, just post like a couple videos. And I was like, this isn't going to work. You guys are crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. And then I posted the video for dress (laughs) and I got out of the car to walk into my mom's house for Thanksgiving. And I put my phone down and I came back and it had like 250,000 views. Or something Wait, how long ridiculous. how long had passed? It was like maybe two hours. Maybe. Two hours? Holy and I'm, cow. And I'm over here, and at the time I was 23 years old. I had had only downloaded TikTok maybe like two weeks prior to that. So Because I was always, you know how everybody at the beginning of this was like, oh, TikTok? I'm not going to get that. That's for like teenagers <laughs> or whatever. Like It took me like a long time to get on that train. Um, as I said before, I'm very stubborn. But... Um, I did it and I literally did it out of resentment to be like, watch me prove me myself right. And yeah, I picked up my phone and I called Hannah and I was like, oh my God, what do I do? There's like 700 comments on this thing. We had wrote, written that song, I think like a week before that. It was a demo that I posted. So we didn't have anything. It was literally the demo that was bounced. Yeah. So what do you do when the song right. is blowing up? And so, and the funniest thing is too, like, so we, we were in a session for that song and it was during COVID. So we had to be out of the building by a certain time for like safety precautions and all this stuff. And so I only recorded two tracks of vocals on that entire song. So I recorded two takes 
And we were like, I'm like, I'm just going to do them really quickly. And we have three minutes until we have to get out of the building or the alarm's going to go off. Oh, man. And so I did the vocals and then we left and that was the bounce that we got for the song. And that's the one that's out. Wow. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. So it was just to, like, it was just the craziest experience, but like all the props to um, my team because they were 100% like, let's just put it out. And I was like, no, 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 that's not how the music industry works. Like, that's not how it does, how we do it. Yeah. I'm just like, we need to prepare. We need promotion. And they were like, mm, let's just put it out. And I was like, fine, you guys are right about this last thing. I'll trust you on this. And then we just released it and we made a music video and like four days later and just released that. And we just like, we just put out as much stuff as we could. And like, they, I, what I've realized is that like when TikTok or social media and stuff, like when they get behind something, it's not just like on that platform. Like they are getting behind you on Instagram and on Spotify and on everything. Like they back you up and I've never seen that before. And now, I, now I like love TikTok and I'm like, oh, my friends, yeah. I love that. <laughs> That's true because you can have something go viral on Twitter. I know all Punked Ups had yeah. stuff go viral on, well, I guess you would say it's viral on Twitter. Um, and had some good Instagram posts here and there. But yeah, it doesn't translate over to any other platform. And the same with Instagram. I mean, I've struggled with that like my whole career. I was like, Instagram now is like what Facebook was. It's like, you don't ex really find new stuff. You kind of are just following the people that you follow. And then when you want to follow someone else, you follow them. And so you right. have to look them up kind of. Their reels and stuff is now obviously make, changing that, um, which I think is cool. But yeah, TikTok, I was shocked because that is like the first social platform where I felt like I could actually see like when my, when that song and that video started blowing up, my Spotify profile was like the highest numbers that has ever been on in the same day. And it spiked at the same time. So that meant that people were searching my name in Spotify from that video and like actually going, like exiting out of the app to go to a different app, which is like yeah. unheard of. That doesn't happen. Yeah. Right. So they were either trying to go find that dress song mm -hmm. or they liked it enough. They knew it wasn't out, but they're going and checking out the back catalog, yeah. which that's what you always hope for. Yeah. And it's just so, I think it's so funny. I've always, um, I just like, I hated TikTok so much. I was so against it. I was like, I don't want to be like put as like a TikTok artist because I I'm 25. I've been doing this since I was probably 12 years old. Right. Like I released my first album at 16 and people are like, she's just started making music. And I'm like, Oh my God. But at the same time, like I have done so much that because of like everyone on TikTok and also I've met so many people and so many artists and so many incredible like wonderful, talented people that I've been talking to now for like two years because we met on TikTok and they now just came to their first show of mine that's awesome. last week, you know? And so that's like, I'm like, I don't care. Call me whatever you want. I'm yeah. like, I'm getting like a cool community out of it. And it's, I don't care what it, you yeah, know? It, yeah, I just, I, I wanted to bring it up too because like I had known that you've been at it for a while yeah. uh, from what I had read, uh, but I just wanted to, you know, you know note that music has been your plan all along yeah. and, and for a long time. So, uh, yeah. people I know they, they hold their criticisms against TikTok uh, no, stars absolutely. and that well, sort of thing. It is such like a funny, um, and also I have a lot of friends that are like proud to be like, I'm a TikTok artist and I'm like, yeah, there's nothing you. wrong with that. Like, nothing wrong it. with that. Yeah. And I'm, I, I definitely felt weird about it for a while because I was like, people think that I just started doing this and I had to kind of like, I was like protective about it. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, but they're still like listening to my music because they found it on there. Am I going to like take that away? Like because, right. of, because of like ego, like I, cause it's just yeah. kind of weird. It's not, it doesn't really matter how you get to where you want to be right. as long as you get there. Right. We're all in different forms of transportation. We're all just exactly. trying to get to the same place. <laughs> exactly. All right. So since that time, I mean, things have seemed to like, really really take off for you so you've been on tour with young blood which we've already mm -hmm. uh discussed uh you've been on a number of collaborations now yeah. you're going on tour with the main here in what a week or so yeah, a couple weeks like 10 days in 10 days so did tiktok also help you land the young blood but tour yeah. as well because it's my understanding and you could tell me if i'm wrong but it's yeah. my understanding that you were posting a tiktok collab uh, uh, off of Youngblood's post or whatever, and before you start singing along to his track, 
you mm-hmm. say, take me on tour. Yeah. Like, I saw, I did see that post. Uh, was that the, did that get his attention? Like what happened? So, it's actually so funny because I, I, there's, so I found that video like after all that stuff happened, I actually forgot that I had posted it because, cause I like, I was just like talking. So I didn't really, and I also realized that there's another one that I forgot about that in the caption says, at Youngblood, take me on tour. Like I <laughs> nice. would seem very pushy about it. So apologies. You to, were very to... <laughs> obvious of where you wanted to go on tour. Manifestation. Um, but I, I honestly don't even know if he's ever seen that video. So that's okay. what's like what's so funny. I almost wanted to like say something about it when we were on tour and be like, "Hey, so how did you find?" That? <laughs> yeah. You know, but um, I honestly don't know. We and that was always like the thing, and like every interview, I was like, "Young blood, like that's the tour." It felt like so. I'm literally in arms. I'm obsessed. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Um, they're like, "We get it, okay." Um, <laughs> but no, that was always the thing. It just like I was such a fan of him, and I, but most of all, it was like the fans of him and that community I was like I want to be a part of that because I am a part of it as like a fan and as a listener and so I was like if I can get in front of those people like that's those are my people you know and I feel like I was I kind of like felt like that was I I wanted that community more than anything not to cut you off but it just makes me think so you're talking about that inclusive community Mm -hmm. and I have to go back to the lost song. That's exact. That's why the song is going to do so well because those are so your much. people. You know that that is your audience, yeah. and this is going to be their song. It just is. That makes me so happy, and I, I truly like. Yeah, I think that's the coolest thing out of any of it is that it's like, I mean, especially for him, he, he's like an artist who sets the standards of like, if I love this person and this person is like good in my book, then like you guys have to respect this person and like trust me. And he's just yeah. created this space where like, as an I've opened for people before and I've played shows where like people are just, you can tell people are sitting there and they're like, when's the, like when are the headliner gonna come out and like that kind of stuff. And they don't care about the opener. And he has created this space where people are like, oh, he picked this person, we're gonna like support this person. And people would go crazy for songs they didn't know, for an artist they didn't know, just because like out of respect for I think like him and like what he's built and just knowing that like, oh, she's That's with awesome. us, you know? And they just like took me in. And I literally posted about the other day, I was like, it feels like I like came to a family reunion that I haven't been to in like 10 years. Like it's like just an incredible energy and just like positivity and so much love. and. I feel the same way about going on this main tour. It's like that that fandom and like those people that show up for that music and for that band and that love them are just like, it's just a certain type of like energy and, and love and acceptance. And I'm like, I can't wait. I want to be in front of you guys and like hang out with you guys every day. Like that sounds like a dream. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's what you do it for, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you've had such an amazing run within the last, you know, few months, really. So let's talk about some of the collabs you've been on. Most specifically, your recent ones, the one with the main and Taking yeah. Back Sunday called Loved You a Little. Awesome. Love it. And uh, another one called Hallelujah with uh, with Under Oath. Under Oath. Dude, like, this is, this is nuts. I feel like you have to be pinching yourself every day. <laughs> every day. Every morning I wake up and I'm like, please don't tell me this is a dream. Every time. <laughs> but like when you sit when you sit down and you think back to maybe three years ago or so, would you have ever imagined that you'd be on two songs back to back that would include artists like this? No, absolutely not. I mean, the thing <laughs> is, it's like I I have always been the type of person where you're like, what do you where or do you think you're going to like succeed at this thing? And I would be 12 years old and be like, yes, I'm going to be Katy Perry. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I've always been that way. Just also just because I feel like saying that's about loud is so important, even if you Absol- feel like yeah. self-conscious or anything. I'm always person totally like agree. stadiums, you know? Um, and so, but like, I've never once been like, oh yeah, all my favorite bands and favorite artists and creators are going to like want to make music with me. Like that's never even like been something I feel like I've processed because that's like a different level. That's like personal like achievements for me that I've always been like, oh, I want to get to here. I want to get this. I want to win this. But having like being able to like actually create 
art that also like does well with people that I literally like suck into concerts of, you know, like right. that's the craziest. You thing own in the their world. band t-shirts and <laughs> I, <laughs> ticket I, stubs. I'm so upset because I remember. So like, I remember the main had this like gold and white and like purple shirt or something. It was like the big letters it was like, for, like the, one of their first albums. Uh-huh. And I remember that shirt and I have a picture in that shirt and I have been scraping the internet for that. I was like on my Facebook in like 2002, like everything. <laughs> That's um, awesome. But like everything, I'm just like trying to find, I'm like, this would be legendary, but I remember owning it. And like, I had a band tee drawer, you know, and uh-huh. they were in it. And so that kind of stuff is just like so insane. And then the under oath thing for me, I just feel like, like that was like the, the first like female they've ever had on a feature and like I think maybe their second or third feature they've ever had in their entire time being a band and it was just like wow. a, such an honor um I fell into that because of Aaron Gillespie the drummer um mm-hmm. and singer uh we worked together in Nashville when he came for like a writer's trip and he came to work on like one of my songs um and I had like heard of Under Oath but I was never like I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh yeah, Under Oath. Like I grew up on Under Oath right, because sure. I was that was like a little bit out of the scene that I was in growing up. Yep. But it was really funny. Danon um, was in that session, and the only poster he has ever had in his studio is an Under Oath poster. Wild. And he started drumming because of like Aaron, and that was like his band. That like that was his oh, like crazy. Bonnie Raitt. So even though for me that wasn't like oh my god like I mean the moment obviously was oh my god but like that band um I now I'm like an insane fan of like I am really crazy at their shows but um that with for even for him like the fact that he was able to have that like incredible moment and then meeting Aaron who ended up writing the title track of my EP with me love and other lies um Uh And now he's like one of my best friends and like literally one of the sweetest people in the whole world. And then was like, you want to hop on an under us? Like, that's the kind of stuff that I'm like this. I just don't really understand the universe. I'm just taking it all in. I'm like, dude, give me whatever you want. I'll take it. Hey, those CDs you were listening to, you know, on the uh, back covers telling you to go to go to Nashville. It's It's all started there. It's it all started there. It's crazy. So it was just announced that you'll be supporting the main on tour. Uh, mm-hmm. It kicks off March 17th in Tucson, Arizona. It's another huge tour for you to be on. Uh, it has to be absolutely exciting. Yeah, it is terrifying and exciting and wonderful and all the things. I honestly, I got back and I got back from the Youngwood tour and I was like, oh, I'm going to be so excited to be home and sleep in my own bed. And I literally slept in my own bed for one night and I woke up the next day and I was like, um, I want to what go play a show. Do? Yeah, I was like, I don't really have like an identity here anymore. <laughs> I'm like, I should <laughs> right. probably leave. Um, I, like, so what said, do you do? That's a great question. Um, I went and got groceries. So okay. that was like a big Because you got to live. Yeah, because I had to feed myself. Um, I honestly have been, the biggest thing for me has been like catching up on social media and things that I'm not, I don't have a ton of time to do on the road. And also, like, this has been such an insane transformation of, like, when I got on tour to when I got off and, like, the amount of people I've met and the amount of interactions I've, like, had that I'm just, like, trying to keep up with that. And then literally we had, like, five days and then we had a release for this week. <laughs> so I'm just mostly doing, like, promo stuff and uh, cleaning my apartment so that when I leave again, it's not a mess doing laundry there's a lot of laundry to be done i took my entire closet with me on this last tour and now this next one is six weeks so i don't even know what i'm gonna do for that i'm gonna bring literally a truck of just graphic (laughs) t-shirts across my fingers nice nice yeah okay so uh real quick though since collabs are very popular right now features and whatnot do you have any plans on collabing with anybody else is there any collabs in the works that you can even say um there are but i yeah, don't the smile I tells can't. it all by the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah there are um honestly my goal right now is to do a collaboration i haven't done any with any like women and i would die Dude. to do okay hear me out that. on this okay okay so um 
we had, I think I had Lolo on. She's sick, yes. She's amazing, right? So I'm going to suggest you get with Lolo on this one. Come um, on. That's so, so sick. So I brought up the idea during one of our interviews with her that I think it would be awesome. Do you remember, God, I don't remember how old I how old you would have been. You would have been probably, God, I feel like I was probably like 16. So you would have been like six, but you may remember. Do you remember the, uh, that song Moulin Rouge that had pink, oh, of course. that had Christina Aguilera, Missy Elliott. Okay. Pink is so, my like adopted mother in my mind. She is. She, my, she's amazing. Yeah. Where the hell did she even go? I know. But okay. The reason I came up with this idea is because the women in the scene that we cover have been killing it like way more than the guys have. Like the guys really need to step up. Um, like I've been into like every single woman release recently. Like they're just totally it. bringing it like yeah. all kinds. Um, and it's not like just one or two women that are doing it. It's like a whole bunch. Right. So I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if there was like one song that featured like Charlotte Sands, Lolo, K Flay, uh, Dude. Chrissy Costanza, uh, Bonnie from Stan Atlantic, like you oh name God, it. Yes. Just like, what if there was like five or six chicks that were it's on a rock song? And I feel like I would that, that would be amazing. That's like so, my secret dream is like an all rock like, girl. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Dude, I'm, let's start the group chat of every let's, female singer that you know. <laughs> let's I'm all start about it. it. Um, no, that is that has literally been like one of my goals. We've so I've realized that like I haven't really like I feel like I haven't had time in the last year to be like intentionally be like, oh, I want to do a song with this person. Like, and I, I never I, I also like see every artist and I'm like, they're so much more successful than me. Like they would never text me back. So I've never been the person who's like oh yeah, they'd want to do a song with me, you know? And so like this year I told myself, I'm like, girl, you gotta just like send the cold email, cold email and just like do it. Because I genuinely, there are so many incredible artists right now that I like listen to their stuff and I'm like, what do I have to do to be a part of this, <laughs> you right. know? And Dude. so I really, I really need to be better at that. And I'm, I'm trying to this year. That is a goal for sure. Sure. So like, even you saying that, like, I, I feel the same way about, like, all punked up. Like, I've been yeah. building this thing up for six years, but I still feel like, oh, there's no way I can get that artist on here. Like, right. I didn't even think I'd be able to get you, honestly. But Nate was just like, oh, yeah, this would be this would be Dude, perfect. I'm honored because to be I here. feel like I just feel like it, and maybe you and I feel the same way. But when you're on the inside looking out, you feel different. Like, maybe you don't really yeah. realize how big you actually are but what i was getting at is like just send the email or just send right. the text or something because you never know the worst Dude. they're gonna say is no and my next i also like kellen quinn you know oh, i'm dude. putting that out in the universe well hey kellen you know, if you're listening <laughs> <laughs> yes he's kellen just, like, quinn, so cool yeah and his voice is just so freaking unique like oh there's God. no other guy voice that's as unique as no I, get, I would like feel nervous singing anywhere like near him because I would he would just be able to like do everything higher and better everything. than me and yes, I'm like I don't. usually I could just be like oh I'll hit the high parts but now I'd be like uh you just take that one go and like well you got it. he he featured on one song I can't remember which one it was but I was hanging out with my friends and one guy was like yeah I really like this one song uh that features this one girl but I don't know who it is I was like that's that's Kellen Quinn mm. <laughs> sleeping with sirens simple mistake like, really I'm like, dude, dude, and I, I can sing. And I saw it. Um, I saw them when I I just played at Unsilent Night in Dallas, Texas. I guess in December, so a few months ago. But um, and he they like headlined, and I had never seen Sleep in Silence live, mm -hmm. and I was literally the whole time just like, because he hits all like effortlessly. He's not even like going like this. He's literally just like. That's amazing. Ah! Like it's crazy. It's and so I've wild. Never, I've never talked to him uh, or anything like that or really followed Sleeping With Sirens at all. I just know who he is, but he seems like he's a really cool dude too. He, he liked one of my comments once, so I'm gonna hold on Ooh. to that for the rest of my life. Hey, that means now you're on his radar. Now he's never gonna do a song with me. He's never gonna, he's gonna be like, that girl's super creepy and she talks about me on all the podcasts. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so sorry. Is Give that what you chance. do? You, drop, you name drop on all the podcasts? <laughs> I should. I should start doing that now. Being like, but if I was gonna do a feature and just do a different person every time. Yes, yes. Yes. Just so I can use that that's clip. Awesome. 
Well, I'll make sure to keep that in the uh, podcast, and maybe I'll share that on Instagram, <laughs> Let's go. too. Let's go. <laughs> Tag him in. All right. Charlotte, I don't want to keep you uh, very long, but before we let you go, yeah. what do you have planned for 2022? You released your EP, Love and Other Lies, uh, what was that, January, late January? Are there plans for another EP later this year? Um, or are you just planning on touring hard for 2022? Honestly, my my main goal for this year is to definitely just play as many shows as I'm like physically healthy enough to play. Um, I... I'm trying to make up for lost time in that aspect, but at the same time, I like have two, I have like so many goals that are like hopefully parallel, but who knows? Um, I, I mean, I think that the single game is kind of where my heart is right now, just because it allows me to like almost create like a separate like vision and visual for every single, instead of putting it all into one project. I always get so mm-hmm. anxious about that. I'm like, oh my God, how do I represent six songs in like one picture on a cover, you know? And sure. that's so different for me as indecisive as I am to be like, okay, well, I want to do this type of promo or this type of visual for this song and then this one. And constantly having something to put out and get excited about is kind of holding me together at this time in my life. And I think being on the road and being able to play new songs and being to play new music for the first time and having a change in the set list is also going to kind of like help um, me feel like things are not just the same for the Yeah, next. it's constantly changing. Yeah. yeah. And I just like have something to look forward to all the time. And um, yeah, so I'm going to try and do that. But also knowing me, I change my mind constantly. So I could very, I could have a 14 song album out in like two months. I have no idea. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Yeah. I would be hitting you up and being like, Hey, what's the deal? Yeah. It's all sleeping with sirens covers. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice. So is there anything else that you want to share with the fans before you go? Um, just that I love you and I appreciate you for listening and for being here and same with you Tyler thank you for having me I am honestly honored that um you even would want me here to have a conversation with you dude for real see (laughs) that's the thing like I I just think you're you're in your own little bubble yeah and you're not able to really see what everybody else is seeing Um, and I don't think that's not a that's not a negative thing I just think that's how most artists probably are so absolutely but hey thank you so much for coming on and and hanging out that it really does mean a lot and you are one artist that i definitely see making some noise especially with this next song lost that, but it comes out friday right so yeah. by the time this episode comes out everybody will, are, had already been listening to it so wow that's exciting it's terrifying yep <laughs> can't wait all right charlotte i'll i'll go ahead and let you go have a good night thanks bye